thank you for downloading the Flixsters podcast. On this week's episode, so far the news is that there are some talks between Universal and Disney uh, about creating a solo Hulk movie and uh, Ruffalo is totally up. Bit in the beginning of the movie where he's on the floor and there's just kind of like a little crack that you see in the wall and there's something in the back, man. I'm not joking, that freaked me out. Mad. When I saw the movements and the, the, the sounds and the look of this ghost, I was like, nah. I will run out in the street, half naked. I'm getting out. Go and watch this movie. It's great. It's a great political movie. If you want to find out, you know, the legal system with what was going on back then in the 60s to what's going on right now, you are going to see so many similarities. And hello and welcome to a brand new episode of The Flicksters, folks. We are bringing you episode 114 through your ears and we got a fantastic show well all our all our shows are fantastic so um (laughs) i I always just say that so you're probably used to that anyway but listen look let's get into the show because we've got some shouts and then we're going to get into movie news and we've got some great films that we want to speak about so davado who we shouting out this week a couple of shout outs this week yes so we have a shout out for emmanuel uh and emmanuel we've obviously had Emmanuel on the show a few times uh and they're just shouting him out from our Instagram and also personal as well because literally every week yeah, Emmanuel's man. hitting us up with news, uh, what's out on trailers, you know, different movies and TV shows. So you know, some of the news that we get actually comes through him. Yeah, I know. So, uh, so yeah, good source. Thank you, Emmanuel. Exactly. And we had we had a, we had a bit of a chat on the old uh, WhatsApp, Emmanuel and I, about uh, Moon Knight. Mm. We'll speak about Moon Knight a bit, uh, you know, a bit yeah. later on. But um, you know, it was good just to be able to kind of like share ideas and be like, oh, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? So yeah, man, I love that. So brilliant. Yeah, thanks, Emmanuel. I'm sure he'll, he'll, be, he'll be back on the show actually quite soon. So yeah. you guys will hear from him real soon. Next shout out goes to Murray. And this is Mr. Facebook, you know, he's old, he's old school. <laughs> he's old school and loves a bit of Facebook. So uh, any Facebook posts we put out, uh, he literally sends them out again. What, what, what do you call it? Repost, yeah? Yes, reposting. Too. I don't know yeah. what they call it. It's kids are calling it these days, but yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> reposts and and Twitter actually as well. So yeah, I know he, he loves his Twitter, but he's a, he's a DC man. He loves a bit Ooh. of Batman, loves the Dark Knight, Heath Ledger, uh, the Joker, all of that. He's got all the old school cartoons. Oh, sorry, cartoons. I've got to speak properly. Mm. And uh, yeah, he's all over that. So yeah, big shout out goes to Murray. Nice one, Murray. Yeah. All right. Okay. Movie news now. Check this out. So um, we just got wind of this actually. So this just happened, you know, maybe a couple of days ago. Assassin's Creed, you know, that game that I remember my nephew kept talking about Assassin's Creed. He goes, oh, you got to play Assassin's Creed. got to play. Assassin's Creed. I didn't end up playing it, but... The graphics, I mean, I was told were absolutely amazing. Well, listen, uh, the company behind Assassin's, Assassin's Creed is a company called Ubisoft, and they're teaming up with Netflix, Devaldo. And what's going on? What, what are we going to see? Yeah, so Ubisoft, a big company that make a lot of games, like, you know, the Tom Clancy games and all kinds yeah. of games like that. And uh, yeah, they're teaming up with Netflix to bring out a series of content. Yeah, so it's going to be a Netflix series for Assassin's Creed. And that's the uh, the old school, I don't know what century is. It looks like a sort of the Renaissance uh, era of maybe Italy yeah. and those sorts of places. And uh, the Assassin's Creed are a, yeah, they're a creed or group or a following of of people that, you know, they, they hang around in the cloaks, uh, the undercovers, they're, they're assassinating, you know, important people. They're trying to actually manipulate history and uh, play chess in society by, you know, taking out, uh, you know, different people, a bit like the Winter Soldier did for, you know, Hydra yeah. in the shadows. You won't know about him until you're dead. So oh. literally that's it. So yeah, Assassin's Creed has been a really, really, really uh, influential and important uh, game for many years. Yeah. Also turned into a film starring, uh, what's his name? Michael Fassbender. Oh. Yeah, that's right. A uh, bit of oh, a flop. Yes. I went to go see it, I fell asleep, but yeah. It looks like it's going to be, uh, yeah, reinvigorated on Netflix. But also Netflix are going to, uh, along with Ubisoft, are going to bring out some other content as well. So maybe we'll see another, like a Ryan, uh, what's it, a Tom Clancy type uh, movie or something like that. I, I so hope so. A lot to work with. That's good. I played the Tom, Clancy, I remember playing the Tom Clancy games and everything. The Division is really good. So if they can turn that into something, I don't know, like... Um 
you know, like, it's like a spy thriller or something like that. That would be really, really great to watch. Um, so, yeah, we'll keep you posted on that one. Okay, now, we're still not done with the horror news, folks. You know, and we've got a kind of bit of horror news that we want to speak about, and maybe even chuck in a horror movie actually for you. But Patrick Wilson, star of the Conjuring universe, and um, he's been in kind of like obviously Conjuring, he's been in Insidious. But um, what is there's, there's another little connection going on there, Devaldo? Is he moving behind the scenes? What's going on? Yeah, so this is this is big news actually. So Insidious, yeah, in, you know what? Insidious have had four movies oh, yeah. uh, so far. Insidious, so is he one, two, three. And I think they had one that was something to do with the the key, something to do with, uh, I don't know, some sort of key. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Patrick Wilson, along with Blumhouse, uh, they are going to going to be making an Insidious 5, yeah, which is, which is due to be released in 2022. But Patrick Wilson, who obviously has been the star of Insidious in the past, is also going to be making his directorial debut behind the camera, pulling the strings, and making us scared. So yeah, so that's big news actually. I'm, I'm yeah. not surprised because he's had a really good relationship with Blumhouse, uh, not just with Insidious, but with The Conjuring and uh, also James Wan, also with uh, DC when he was in Aquaman as well. So yeah, you know, the links are strong there. So yeah, good on him. He's good. He's good. He's a really good actor. I mean, I remember when I saw like Hard Candy and I thought, you know, he can he can play the slimy, you know, he, yeah. can, but he can also play like kind of the every every man as well type of a, a character as well. So yeah, man, I think he's got it all and, you know, he's, he's quite good. So yeah, that would be interesting to watch. The other big news that, you know, let's just get into this. So um, over the last couple of days, you know, the news has probably broken out and probably a lot of our listeners out there probably already heard of this, but... You know that Disney, they were going to be working on Moon Knight, this Marvel character, and Oscar Isaac, the actor, you know, Dameron Poe, mm -hmm. actor from Ex Machina. God, what other movies, Devaldo? He's done some other great ones, but, hasn't what he? What was that music film? The, the something, what was it? Forgetting uh, Lewin something. I know what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, Lewin Davis or something or something that is like it. that. <laughs> yeah. This guy um, is good, man. He was in um, he was in Robin Hood as well. I remember him him turning up in that one. He played the king there. Okay. Yeah, he played okay. the king there. But the news is that he's been cast as Moon Knight. So, Devaldo, just let's get into this just a little bit. So, what is Moon Knight? Who is he? What does he do? And tell me some of his powers. Moon Knight, yeah. So basically, I mean, also, you know, it's really weird, but yesterday in the UK, uh, uh, during Halloween, it was a full moon, actually, Ooh. on Halloween, which is actually quite rare, you know. So, Damn. you know, if you, a, a character like Moonlight, Moon Knight, sorry, <laughs> uh, he's the sort of person that would be at his peak of his powers during the time like that. But to answer your question, Moon Knight is a character uh, called Mark Spector. He's a bit like uh, Marvel's version of Batman. He's incredibly okay. rich. He's suave. He's got the moves. But also his powers derive from a bit something, something a bit more of the supernatural. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. So he's, you know, you know like uh, the sort of ghost riders and, and the Hellstroms and you know, those sorts of characters. Even maybe you could even say a bit of uh, Doctor Strange as well. Because right, Doctor Strange's okay. powers do derive from other dimensions, you know, because you know, when he's, when he's calling on the eye of Agamotto or when he's saying the the, 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 the Shanti or the Crimson Bands of Sitaract, all those powers come from a different realm. So Moon Knight is a similar sort of character. He His powers derive from the lunar, like a, like a, a spiritual sort of lunar power. Uh, and he draws on the power of the moon. So when the moon's at its fullest, he is at his most powerful. So I guess he's not really good during the daytime, is he? <laughs> 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 but you know what i've been reading kind of like some of this backstory uh you know behind the character and the thing that was interesting for me was is that he suffers from did like uh disassociative identity disorder and right. in some versions i might add so uh, some of the writers for marvel they kind of played up on that and i think there were some instances where he kind of he, you know, he, he didn't realize he had like some of his powers. So maybe, hopefully, Disney will kind of play on that whole thing and maybe, I don't know, like show that this character has got many, many different sides and there's kind of like a um, uh, like a difficult side to this person as well. You know, maybe oh, yeah, yeah. That, that might come out. No, you're spot on. I think they are going to, uh, there's going to be some conflict in yes. how he maneuvers and how he, you know, exhibits his powers, whether he's going to be fully, you know, a good guy or be a bit, of an anti-hero sure but uh but yeah i mean he's he's going to be a serious character he should be a serious character i should say we never know 
Uh, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of Oscar Isaac because of how he messed up Apollo Apocalypse, but I guess that's yeah. not his fault. But hopefully this person here, I mean, his powers in that Egyptian moon god, uh, uh, Kunshu. I mean, when he, when, he starts, when he starts dealing with Egyptian gods and stuff like that, I mean, we've seen how Black Adam's going to start doing that, you know? So when he started drawing upon uh, the gods that are from sort of real life, the same way, uh, you know, Thor has with Norse mythology and stuff like that, it gets a bit more, you know, serious. So I'm hoping, you know, his powers mixed with his, like you mentioned, multiple personality sort of uh, disorder uh, mixed with his, uh, probably he's going to have quite an, maybe he might have an ego to him and a bit of a character. Mm. Hopefully all this mixed together should, you know, compel the character to be something a bit different. Yeah. Listen, look, I'm a, I'm a great fan of Oscar Isaac. I think he's great in the stuff that I've seen him in, but my only concern is, or my only thing is like, shouldn't they have gone for an unknown? And uh, let me tell you the reason why, because when they cast someone like Thor, they went with an unknown. Like, I mean, Chris Hemsworth, he wasn't like a big actor when he was cast as Thor. When they did Loki, he wasn't kind of like a big actor. A lot of those kind of actors, they weren't like huge, huge movies. And I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, Oscar Isaac is this huge, huge movie star. He is, like, huge. Uh, I, th I think he's at a point in his in his career where, like, I don't know, he was he's bigger now than what, say, Chris Hemsworth was, was when he got Thor. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't know, maybe mm. they could have gone with an unknown and, like, you know, I don't know, maybe uh, it's just kind of one of those things that I was just thinking about, it, you know, would that have made a difference? But, yeah, man, you know what, it's all great. Um you know, it's going to be great to see on the screen how, what they make of this and mm. add this to the roster of all the other stuff that uh, that's coming out. I mean, uh, I can't wait for Wonder Vision. Hopefully, 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 this is still going to come out this year, Wonder Vision. So um, yeah, we'll see. But any news on when we might see Moon Knight Deval? Uh, no, no news yet. I'm I'm thinking probably 2022. That's my right. estimation, but you never know sure. these days. Exactly. All right. Okay. Now uh, let's keep it with Marvel just a little bit. So tell us about Le Lena Headey. Who, to remind everyone who Len Le Lena Headey is. Yeah, Lena Headey or Lena Headey is uh, the actress who played Cersei Lannister. Ooh, and you know yeah. she always pays her debts. Uh, she also <laughs> played the, the, main, the main villain in the better version of, uh, I want to say uh, Doom, but it's not Doom, is it? It's, no, uh, it's... Um, um, you know, with Carl Urban in it. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the judge, the, the flipping... Dread. Dread, that's it, yeah. That's it. Both of us got mind blank. Oh, shit, man, yeah. But Judge yeah. Dread, yeah, it's a great, that's a great movie. I love that movie. Yeah, so, yeah, so she's, she's a massive actress. Uh, we've seen her play some really good and compelling characters. And we just, you know, I know she can do a good job in everything that she does. Uh, but, yeah, her, uh, Lena Headey and also Luke Wilson... What have we seen Luke Wilson in? We've seen Luke w Wilson in. He's, he's well. He's one of the Wilson brothers, isn't he? Yeah, as, as, he's been along in... with uh, Owen, Owen, uh, Patrick Wilson and also Owen Wilson. Are they That's all it. Wilson? Owen Wilson, Luke Wilson. Bennett. Luke Wilson. I just we just I saw him in. Uh, I just finished up with uh, a couple of weeks ago with Star Stargirl. Girl. Oh yeah. yes. So he was yes, in that. Yes, 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 yes. That's the one. That's the one. So yeah. So basically, they are going to uh, headline in Marvel's new next gen. Uh, series. So yeah, Marvel's uh, Next Gen, this, this is something actually quite new. Uh, Next Gen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. I haven't got enough, gen I don't, haven't got enough <laughs> generations already. Exactly. Tell us about this. Come on. Yes. <laughs> so Next Gen is a, a series that, that came out, I believe it was, oh, it was the 2000s, I believe. And uh, they're a bunch of characters, a bit of a uh, sort of a hodgepodge a bunch of characters that have different powers, a bit like you could say the X-Men. Uh, and uh, they have to obviously protect you know, mankind and stuff like that. And they sort of get together and not know, they're kind of, they're not sure of who they are. And they're kind of, you know, I guess, uh, I don't know, we, you know when characters are all separate, for example, and uh, bit by bit they have incidents where they kind of have to work together yeah. to try and, you know, beat someone and in the comics, one of their main uh, uh, villains is Modok. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. Modok. And Modok is actually someone that's been spoken about a few times. And there's some uh, rumors that Modok might show up in, ooh, I want to say, I want to say uh, Winter Soldier and, and, uh, and Falcon. 
sorry, Winter Soldier and yeah, Winter Soldier and Falcon or Captain America, whatever you want to call him. Also, uh, the Loki series as well. Uh, there's a there's a few epi- a few series that Modok might show up in, but yeah, these these next gen characters, there's not so, so much news yet as to who's going to be playing who or what. But just expect an X Men type series uh, to be coming out quite soon. They seem to be quite. Uh, mm, I want to say a little bit like you know the uh, uh, Inhumans. Yeah, yeah, a bit, a bit. I don't know, a bit of a crew like that. A bit of a crew like that, a bit like an X Men crew, but not an X Men crew. If you know what right. I mean. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Gotcha. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah, actually. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, do you know what? They, they are. They are. They are quite a new group compared to sort of the rest of the Marvel roster. But uh, hopefully, the fact that they are quite a new group could mean that there's more, uh, you know, scope for the the you know the makers to actually play with and not keep it too rigid. Right. So this could be an interesting one. You know, sometimes it's these. Uh, obscure characters like yes. the Guardians when they first came out, no one knew much about them. But then there was, you know, they were allowed to be themselves and yeah, and grow into yeah. the character. So maybe this could be the same sort of thing. Yeah, man. And develop. I mean, they've got hun- literally hundreds and hundreds of characters that they can just pluck and pull and like you know do whatever they want to do with. So listen, yeah. Um, so we'll keep you posted on that, and um, you know any new stuff that comes from that uh, side of of the Marvel world, we'll let you know. Now let's speak about this. Now hopefully this happens, but the big news here is Hulk. Obviously, Devaldo. Let's remind everyone: Hulk is a obviously a Marvel character, but the film rights to Hulk belongs to who yeah i i own the film rights to hulk uh, <laughs> and uh, i've been holding up it for quite a while i've been waiting for the stocks to you know raise and i thought you know what <laughs> i don't want to sell all right know, just I to want... kind of like you know just to stop any confusion the devout does not own the rights to hulk oh, but man. universal pictures they basically own the film rights to to, to hulk now can you remember like when did this happen yeah oh my gosh i think this happened during the uh, was it the early '90s when Marvel had a bit of problems with funny, and they ended up with not with funny with with money? Yeah, that's a money problems, and they they sold all their rights to different studios just to keep Marvel afloat. So obviously Disney got a lot of like the you know the Avengers and Iron Man rights, and Sony got Spider Man, Universal got Hulk, uh, Fox got the X Men. So that's what happened, you know, back in the day. And because of that, uh, you know, Universal own the distribution rights to the Hulk, which wow. means you know, we had the Hulk film in 2003 with Eric Banner, directed by, uh, what's his um, name again? Of shit, man. We're doing really bad Ang with Lee. the names. Ang Lee. Ang Lee. Ang Lee. Yeah, yeah, that was about Ang Lee. Then we had 2008. Eight. That was uh, like a Same like year a as Iron Man. Yeah, like a, a Marvel. No, no, 2010, wasn't it? Sorry. Well, 2008. No, 2008. No, 2008. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was with uh, that was a partnership with Marvel actually. Because remember, yeah, Iron Man showed up at the end. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously we had Thor Ragnarok, which had the Hulk in it. But as you'll notice, the Hulk's uh, name wasn't in the title. So the, the 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 rules are that Hulk can be involved in the Avengers or be involved in whoever, but he can you cannot have Hulk in the name of the title, and it cannot be a standalone film. That's how Crazy. Marvel are able to work with Universal to have Hulk involved, but. So far, the news is that there are some talks between Universal and Disney uh, about creating a solo Hulk movie, and uh, Ruffalo is totally up for it. Yeah, man, I'm up for totally it. Seriously, for it. if they do the Me whole too. thing, it, like if they do the whole thing, what what Marvel did with Sony with Spider Man, and you know they're able to kind of ink out a deal where, you know, exactly the same thing, kind of you know, where they've got the distribution rights and or whatever it is, or however they're going to share it, bring it on. Because mm. I think, mm. I think Mark Ruffler, he wants to do like, a, he wants to have a solo movie. I reckon he deserves one, right? Yeah. He wants to do a World War Hulk. That's where the uh, Illuminati, uh, you know, send Hulk out into space because Hulk is a bit of a liability. He's reckless, you know, that, that, that sort of thing can't be controlled. Yeah. And we saw that in uh, Avengers Ultron, you know, Hulk, he wasn't sent into space, I guess, on purpose, but he went into space yeah. and then went into, you know, the uh, the, the, the arena uh, battling and stuff like that. Yeah. And in the comics, same thing happens. But in the arena, he meets a lady. He has children. Oh, shit. <laughs> he has How children. does that work? Uh, mate, mate he, he goes green, <laughs> innit? He goes green and, <laughs> you know, Hulk smash, you know? And then, uh, <laughs> and then something happens and 
his children unfortunately die and he comes back and he blames the Illuminati and Earth for his children dying and he literally goes, goes crazy berserk. on Earth, which is why yeah. it's called World War Hulk. So that's what they're trying to do, some sort of storyline around that. So let's see if that happens. Let's see if that happens, man. It'd be great if it does happen. And I'll be the first one there with my ticket as soon as the cinema's open. Right, okay, now let's speak about this. Apparently, folks, now, Christian Bell, you know, you know, Batman landed down under a couple of days ago and people were losing their shit over here in Australia because they were like, what, what, what? Christian Bell's here, Christian Bell's here. Apparently he's here. He flew in, private jet. There's some footage online that you can go and check out. And um, apparently he's here to do prep work for Thor, Love and Thunder. So, you know, those rumours that you heard on the Flixters podcast months and months and months ago about Christian Bell being in Thor, Love and Thunder. Well... It looks like as if those rumours that we were at the forefront of, we, we, we kind of, you know, we made it happen, Devaldo, right? Wow, we, we made that happen. Damn. Yeah, we're that, like, exactly. We, we need the cup. We need the cup. We, we were there. So apparently, yeah, he's a Christian Bell's here. And apparently, you know, Taika Waititi's around here somewhere. And um, I think production is going to move on over to um, to New Zealand. So maybe he's got to do some quarantine over here. Um, and the question, the people are kind of like a bit annoyed is they're like, obviously, yeah, man, how the hell did Christian Bell get to fly over to Australia from wherever he was? And there's like, you know, th- about 30, 40,000 stranded Australians around the world and they can't get flights home. And folks, I mean, you're talking about Batman. I mean, you know, with that dollars, I mean, he can go anywhere, right? So um, they, they <laughs> yeah. got it. Uh, but yeah, man, it's good. I mean, so Thor Love and Thunder preparation is going ahead. Maybe they're going to start obviously shooting, starting doing principal photography. And we're just going to get closer and closer to kind of seeing that vision. And I can't wait for that. Damn, I can't wait for that as well, man. Shit. Bring it, do you know what? Bring it on. There's been too many delays and pushbacks and this and that. Oh, Can man. you imagine, I mean, Devado, if it gets to the point, right, where there's too many pushbacks, too many delays. And then when these movies come out, we're, we're like, oh, yeah, all right, okay. Nah, I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I want it. I want it. Exactly. We want we want this. All right. Okay. Now we're going to finish up uh, movie news with some sad news. We're bringing this news to you because this just happened basically yesterday. So uh, 007, Sean Connery, J- a.k.a. James Bond, died yesterday, uh, age 90 years old. And apparently he's he's been kind of living a life, uh, you know, obviously away from the limelight. He retired back in 2006. His last movie was, I think... 2003's The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which is, it's not that, a great movie. That is last film, seriously. 2003. Oh my was gosh. Last movie. And then I think 2006, he retired. And that's it. And then he just kind of like, you know, went off grid, like, you know, he just, you know, went, went out of the limelight. And apparently like, you know, he's been living in, he was living in the Bahamas and he passed away. His family he haven't said what the cause was, but we know that he kind of had some health issues over the last, like, you know, two, three years and stuff like that. But yeah, 007, the first person to play, you know, James Bond on the screen, Sean Connery, Scottish actor, uh, you know, he passed away yesterday. So uh, yeah, rest in peace, man. I mean, I didn't know this Devado, but apparently he was offered the role of Gandalf, the yep. wizard. Yeah. And he turned around and he said no. And apparently they did some calculations, but he, mm. um, not that kind of like, maybe he wasn't into the money and stuff like that, but uh, they, they calculated it and they said that he, he lost out on maybe over $400 million. Yeah, it was a crazy, crazy deal. He was uh, supposed to get a small, I believe a small payment uh, for the film, but just uh, on, on the back end, he was meant to have had a percentage of yeah. the of the box office. Obviously, Lord of the Rings trilogy was massive, so he was set to earn a massive chunk of money, but he turned Shit. that down. He just so, turned yeah. it down. And this guy, I mean, Oscar winner, he won for The Untouchables, which is a great movie. And obviously another movie that I'm like a huge fan of, Highlander, he was in that one. Yeah, but mostly people are going to remember him from James Bond, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, well, there you have it. Rest in peace, James Bond, Sean Connery. Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. All right, okay. Devado, let's check out Box It Watchlist. Now, um, we've mentioned this show before on, on the podcast. I actually haven't seen any episodes, but people have been talking about it. You know, they've been saying it's, you know, it's, it's, it's good and there's some interesting themes going on in this. This is on HBO Max. Uh, it's called Raised by Wolves. And Deval, I mean, what can you tell us about it? You know what? It's decent, you know. I started watching it. That's actually a recommendation from Emmanuel. So thanks for that. But yeah, Raised by Wolves is a, it's a decent show uh, directed by Ridley Scott, actually. Uh, I don't know if he directed all the episodes, but so far, I've, from what I've seen, he's directed a few. I'm thinking about four episodes in. And yeah, do you know what? It's a, it's a decent show. It's and what HBO. About the- yeah, well, I was just going to say, with like the look and feel, it, can you kind of like, is it like a Ridley Scott movie where he's got kind of, you know, you know, the Ridley Scott kind of look yeah, and feel? Yeah, it kind of, the look and feel, I mean, there's androids in this and their blood is white. And again, that's from like aliens, you could say, you know, the androids have got white blood and the, the planets and stuff like that. The planet actually reminds me of something from Prometheus. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, Prometheus. So yeah, it's, 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 uh, you know, it's a decent... I mean, the premise of the show is in the future, uh, what is it? In the future, there's been a massive, well, there's been beef uh, and earth and uh, the sort of humanity, wars, all that kind of stuff. And then androids have been created to try and obviously kind of trying to help and stuff like that. Uh, and so far, I don't know exactly what happened because they, they don't really tell you everything straight away. So during the show, you get flashbacks and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so uh, there's been some sort of, you know, craziness. And so some people have left Earth to go f- to another planet to try and obviously, you know, settle. Yeah. And uh, during that time, uh, something happened and the androids broke away and are trying to raise human kids as their own. Right. And these, these androids, one of them is really powerful. One of them is really, really powerful. They call them necromancers and they have the ability to sort of fly. But they don't fly like Superman. They kind of fly like uh, as if as if like a crucifix, you know. Is it? And like, they got their arms out basically. Like you know, remember how Ronaldo used to celebrate <laughs> Ronaldo yes. the footballer? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. they have their arms out and they kind of float and oh. they they scream like this really high pitched voice. And if if you're in vicinity, if, if you're in the vicinity of that, you basically blow up like. Is it? You blow up like how the heads do in the boys. Yeah, it's like they are crazy, crazy, uh-uh. crazy powerful. Uh, but yeah, it, it's quite, it's quite good. I, I like it so far. Um, it's quite scientific. The planet that they've gone to is Kepler. Uh, Kepler, I think, is two twenty-two B. I think it is. I mean, Kepler is a real uh, star system in in real life, actually, uh, and it's a star system that is supposed to have uh, Earth-like uh, planets that are. Uh, like Earth-sized and also uh, are sort of similar distance. Basically, the gold, they, they call it the Goldilocks zone. That's when oh. a planet is uh, at the right distance from the star to, you know, possibly have Earth-like conditions, so like free-flowing water and stuff like that. And uh, where they land is, is a planet called, I think, Kepler-22b or something. And... Uh, that could even be a moon, actually, because I think the way they designate planets and moons on f- faraway galaxies is the main star is called whatever. So this one's called Kepler after Johannes Kepler, who's an astronomer. And the the name or the number is usually designated to the planet. And then the letter is usually designated to the moon. So let's say it's Kepler 1C. So that could be Kepler. The first planet is 1. And then C is the third moon of that planet. Whoa. Uh, I think that's correct. I hope I'm not, hope I'm not giving the wrong I'm, information. I'm, uh, let's just say but, it is. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I like the fact that they actually used real planets to, mm. to you know, sort of give us a... Ground yeah, it, yeah. Exactly, really ground it. So I did like that a lot, actually. So Yeah, I mm, mean, Ridley Scott, he's not done with space yet, is he? Because, I mean, like, you know, we've mentioned this on the show before. He's, he's Apparently he's been he's going to be working on another Aliens movie. So he's still got a lot of stuff to say through the, the kind of the genre of sci-fi. Yeah, I think so. And I think this is actually another way of doing it. Not always a big blockbuster movie, but, you know, sure. TV and uh, giving him more freedom and, you know, expression to do what he wants. 
uh, without being sort of too too sort of judged on box office. So yeah, it's decent. I like it. I All like right. it. Well, it sounds interesting. Yeah, man. So go go, folks, go check that one out. I mean, I've I've got to put it on the on the watch list there. Uh, this next one sounds pretty interesting as well, and kind of a bit of a political stance on this one, Devado. Right? Tell us about this next one. Yeah, I thought you know what? Let me get political on your asses. So <laughs> uh, you know, now the elections coming up in in the US. Uh, by the time you listen to this podcast, it may have been uh, you know decided. Yes, uh, I actually think Trump's going to win. Because, you know what? I know, yeah, I know, he's, because he's, he's a, just something, something is just yeah, gonna, he's gonna, there's something yeah. gonna happen, and oh, yeah, man, I know what you mean. Yeah, I just think he's gonna win. I mean, yeah, he's, he's a joke, he's a joker, but these yeah. days, in, the leaders don't have to be the best leader to win these days. So hey, I know. but yeah, the Trump. So I got it from BBC, uh, and it's basically a documentary that really, you know, details how he works and how he puts on a show. Uh, as mad as mad as he is, as crazy as he is, he knows exactly what he's doing, and he knows what to do in today's society to stir up emotion, to get a following, to get people to vote for him. To you know, just he knows how to play the game very well, and sometimes that's all you need to do. I mean, this guy came from TV, came from being a businessman, came from you know being a tycoon. I, he wasn't even a politician. So think about that. How the heck, <laughs> you know, and it seems like he's doing it again. So yeah, as much as he's a, uh, you know, people have all these names for him and stuff like that from like the documentary, it showed that he was always like that. It's not a surprise. He, was, he hasn't just become what he is. He's always been this way. Uh, but obviously now he's on the world stage, but yeah, really, really fascinating show actually. Yeah. So I, I did and like he's it. Got, I think um, like three episodes. Yeah. He's, he's got Scottish roots as well. Yeah, he has. Yeah, that's why he's got a uh, he's got a golf course in Scotland that he holds Damn. really close to him. Yeah, so and I and I mm. want. I mean, like obviously, I mean, it's probably got to be worth like millions, right? So, was yeah. that did did that happen whilst he was president, or was that before oh, no, presidency? No, no. He's, had, he's had that for ages. Oh, ages, is it? Ages. Okay. Yeah, he's got things all over the world, man. He's got casinos yeah, man. here, houses here, this and that. I know, he's man. got his own tower. He's like, he's like Iron Man, like, you know, Stark Tower. He's got Trump <laughs> Tower. I mean, come on. But just like orange, <laughs> orange looking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you know what? That sounds like a great show. I think, I think actually they're showing that on um, Australian TV over zero as well, actually. So I just had a quick look and yeah, I'll be able to kind of catch that one. So that sounds, looks and sounds really interesting. Uh, let's go uh, forward with this, with the, with these new trailers um, and new on yep. streaming. So Devaldo. Yeah, you put on here, you, this is a great one actually that you put on here. This one's called Paranormal and this is a trailer that people can go and check out. It's, this is going to be a, uh, a it's, it's a TV show, right? Paranormal. Yeah, that's right. It's coming out on the 5th of November. Yep, yeah, uh, 5th of November and it's set in the 60s actually. So a bit on, uh, kind of follows on from what we, what we spoke about last week with Nurse... Was it Hatchet or Ratchet? I kept getting wrong, Ratchet, one it? of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ratchet. But the so interesting thing this... about this is that it's set in Egypt, right? Or something? Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's a bit different. So it's set in 60s and it uh, follows uh, the adventures of uh, Dr. Rafat Ismail. Uh, he's a, a hematologist, finds himself faced with a series of um, uh, supernatural events. So yeah, it does. Uh, it does take take place in. Uh, I think it's in, yeah. I think it is Egypt, like you said. And uh, basically, uh, he's in his forties. He begins to experience paranormal, paranormal activities, and he's got like a team, a uh, university sort of. I think uh, graduates and stuff like that. Or and they're basically trying to uncover what paranormal activities these are. And I think other people have these, you know, uh, goings on. And yeah, I mean, it's based on a best-selling thriller. And yeah, it seems like it should be an interesting one because it's slightly different to the most stereotypical, you know, stories and locations and stuff. So Absolutely. I think just that alone will make it a bit more interesting, you know, and paranormal sort of, you know, you know, haunting of Bly House and, yes. you know, Nerds Ratchet, all that kind of stuff. It kind of is in the right place at the right time on the right platform as well so netflix has got it on lock absolutely and like i mean i kind of read this somewhere they they trying to reach out to different countries and and the way that they do that is by by bringing on board like homegrown talent and like you know something that's made in uh egypt uh you know mm, with egyptian exactly. actors or, or whatever yeah, in, in yeah. local languages it helps 
when I saw the trailer, there's a, and if you do see the trailer, folks, um, there's a girl in there somewhere. There's like a little girl in there where he's got a connection to this girl from his past and everything. And yeah, man, it looks creepy. There's like genuinely like, you know, I'm like, wow, this actually looks pretty good. So yeah, that's called Paranormal. Go check it out. That's going to be coming out on the 5th. So, you know, by the time this episode comes out, it'll already be out. Now, let's speak about this next one. So this next film is called Songbird. And I saw the trailer. And one of the things that kind of caught me was uh, this whole thing where it's linked to COVID. And in this trailer, they they don't call it, they, they call it COVID-23, Devaldo. Did you notice that? Oh, my God. That, that is just... That is hmm. that's on the nose, man. Like seriously, hmm. that's scary, just, man. That's scary. Come on, this come movie, on. That's too close to home. I know, man. Seriously. So, um, it's produced by um, it's, it's Michael Bay's behind this, and oh, who were the other people? The Purge. I think the Purge. The people behind the Purge. Michael Bay's behind this. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and you've got kind of like, you know, some other kind of like, you know, big movies, uh, the, the producers of those movies behind this as well. But yeah, main people, Michael Bay, The Purge. And when I watched it, it definitely has got this Purge feeling about it where you're locked inside the house. Uh, there's this kind of like a worldwide global event. People in America, like hundreds of millions of people have died. People are basically quarantined. They're left inside their houses. And one, uh, it focuses on this one woman. She's basically inside her house and different people are trying to get inside her house for whatever reason. And mm. you've got all these different characters. I think her mum's basically there but then her mum starts displaying symptoms of like coughing fever headaches or what are you going to do are you going to let your mum come into your house or whatever it is it's crazy it's crazy 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 and it's so relevant for now now oh because gosh. we're going through this shit right now deval crazy pandemic here yeah? nah mate nah 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 we we'll keep it moving i don't want to know about this one i'm not even gonna <laughs> watch it because it might just come to <laughs> Life Seriously, even man. More. <laughs> Let's not speak. Yeah, exactly. And all right. Okay. So obviously we're not done with, well, actually we're done with Halloween, but I mean, we, I still kind of feel like as if we're still in this kind of <laughs> scary little mode, but listen, uh, Halloween kills. Now, Devaldo, was this supposed to come out this year? It was supposed to be out already, but we were supposed to have watched it and reviewed it on today's show. Literally. So uh, what the yeah. hell, why are they waiting a year for this? Because cinemas aren't open. So they've, they've delayed it and now they've put it back till I think next year rather than put it on early. I think they want it to be on on Halloween. So, yeah, yeah. I, saw, I saw the teaser trailer. It looks like, you know, a lot of the same, but slightly different. Yeah. Uh, you know, what's his name? Is it Michael Myers, isn't it? Michael Myers is back. Michael Myers, he's out there, you know, walking around slow, not <laughs> oh, gosh, walking around man. slow, doing his hills, doing his <laughs> doing his <laughs> doing you know the same what, shit he does, killing people. And no one can stop him. So <laughs> it looks interesting. I mean, you know, the first one done really well at the box office. Yes, it did. Uh, and, you know, I know we got a lot of laughs out of our show. <laughs> we got a, seriously, man. This, <laughs> this is honestly, it's that show, that episode kills me. Like, you know, honestly, every yeah. literally just killed me that one. Um, because you know what? We have like, people have different experiences when they go into different movies. And the, the experience that I had going into that movie where I was like, I was, uh, parts of it, I was bored. Parts of it made me laugh. Parts of it, I thought, oh yeah, that bit's really good. And, you know, now I'm thinking I've got to watch this movie because it's reminding me of watching that first one and doing the podcast about <laughs> that first one. So i got to watch yeah. it, man. But you know what? All you get to see in this trailer is just people turning their heads and it's not like you know i don't know it's just going to be more of the same right yeah do you know what i'm not going to lie it looks like more of the same but just slightly different that's it yeah yeah exactly all right well listen when that movie comes out we will definitely watch it and we will speak about it on the show now it feels like a lifetime ago devalda that we spoke about this because i remember when you brought this on to movie news and you said oh they're, they're going to be making saved by the belt so is this this is actually out now right or what? Oh, no, what's going on? Uh, it's out on the 25th of November. Okay. And yes, Saved by the Bell is back. <laughs> this is going to be on Peacock, uh, on, yeah. on, the, on, on the Peacock uh, streaming service. And we are going to see the return of uh, Kelly Kapowski, uh, Jesse Spano, this guy, he knows all the names AC well. Slater, Zach <laughs> Morris. Uh, it's yeah. I don't, I don't know if Screech is coming back on this one. Oh, uh, or no. Mr. Belding. I don't know if Mr. Belding, uh, if Mr. Belding is still alive. I don't know actually. Uh, but yeah, we, we're going to see quite a few of the old school coming back, but also 
the new school are going to be there as well. Oh, okay. And some of the new school look a lot like the old school. We've got a guy in, in, in this one called <laughs> Mac. Is he's it? Called, what's he called? Mac Morris. No, yeah, he's, he's, his name's called Mac Morris. That isn't, I mean, Zach, is it Zach Morris? Or is, it, so is that his son or something, maybe? Oh, is that what they've I mean, gone for? Maybe. Is that his son? Is, 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 is his name Zach? Zach Morris? Yes, is that, that's it. Must it. Be his son. Yeah, 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 it must be. Yeah, so, <laughs> and in this oh. one, we see Zach Morris. He's uh, like a, is he like some sort of mayor in this or something? I think he's he's some a governor. Of, like, yeah, apparently he's a, governor, he's a Cali- yeah, governor of California. There you go, yeah. Lisa Turtle's back as well. Wow, Lisa Turtle. Oh. Damn. Yeah, she's back. So this is going to be fun. I, I'm going to watch it just to see how things turn out. So yeah. it looks interesting to me. Exactly. I oh, mean, it's a shame, man. Screech isn't going to be in it. But uh, with all his kind of, I remember after Saved by the Bear, he got into like porn and he started doing some yeah. other shit and like, you yeah, know, have drugs troll, and whatnot. Yeah, man. If fans of Saved by the Bear, definitely go check out that trailer and, um, you know, watch it and, you know, we can speak about it. But okay. Lastly, I want to speak about this trailer. This is a new film that's coming out on Netflix. I think I'm pretty sure that this movie is coming out in December. So next month you'll be able to watch this, but check this out. It's called Alice in Borderland. And yes, they're kind of riffing on the whole Alice in Wonderland type of a thing. So this movie is set in um, Japan, modern day Japan, three friends. They are gamers, they're nerds, they're geeks, Mm. and, you know, deep into pop culture, and they're constantly playing on the games. And during a blackout one day, we don't know what the cause of the blackout is. There's basically no more people left. But what the three are then, what happens with three is that they're drawn into a game and they have to play the game to basically survive. So you are going to get loads of... <laughs> basically it is that they got to basically play a game to survive and the deeper that they you know pass through the levels you know they win the points and like you know save the world it's that kind of a thing ready player one type of a, a thing you know what it looks fun it looks interesting it's obviously the, the the graphics are great the cgi is great in there and um it's you know japanese language obviously set in japan and i just watched the trailer and i thought you know what you know it looks actually like you know fun so uh, i'm looking forward to it it's going to be coming out on netflix like i said it's going to be coming out in december keep your eyes peeled for that one because i think it might do pretty well actually Mm, alice in borderland okay yeah and and the name's quite cheeky as well isn't it (laughs) yeah it's that whole nod to kind of you know alice remember she goes through the the, the little hole thing and she follows the white rabbit and in this in this trailer (laughs) you're going to see they follow this kind of lady and she's like oh listen hey you got to do this and you got to do that and you know, you got to play the game. Once you step forward, you play the game, you must finish the game is basically what she's turning around and saying. Okay. All nice right. One. So, yeah. So let's move on to Anniversary Corner, Devaldo. Yeah. And what we got cooking in, in the corner? Yes, this one is called On Expenses. So uh, if you want to win the Rakuten uh, prize this week, uh, let us know what the theme is of our Anniversary Corner films. We're not going to say what it is. But you tell us what the theme sounds like. The closest person wins the code. And that's Rakuten movie code for you. So the first film is called On Expenses. And this one is about, it's a, it's a story describing uh, about a journalist who attempted to make Britain's MPs disclose their expenses under the Freedom of Information Act. There was a big story that broke a few years ago about, you know, uh, MPs, uh, members of parliament. They're like, you know, in the UK, they're like the UK, US version of Congress people, for example. And uh, they didn't, uh, the MPs were not, you know, uh, uh, disclosing their expenses. There was a big scandal about, you know, MPs misusing their expenses. Some of them were caught and some of them had to, you know, really apologize or they were reprimanded or I don't, I don't, I don't actually know what happened to them, but it was big news. And it caused a lot of distrust with people because it showed that people in power were able to abuse their power and, and use their expenses to, for example, pay for their bills or pay for travel or just pay for things that they shouldn't really be paying for on tax, pay money. Pay for properties. A lot of them were paying for properties. Property. Oh, wow. There you go. Look, big, big stuff. Yeah. It was big mad. It was stuff. crazy. Mm-hmm. So this film is about that. It's about the, yeah, the journalists trying to make sure that Things like that can't happen again by making all MPs, you know, disclose their 
their expenses on the freedom of the freedom of, of information. So yeah. Yeah, interesting there. Quite a political uh, situation there. Exactly. Mm. Now, man, that's great. Yeah, I mean, um, when that came out, loads of people were shocked. And uh, you know what? I mean, listen, at the end of the day, when when that came out, I wasn't surprised. Politicians, they can do loads of stuff, man. So you just don't know, man, seriously. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, this next one is from 15 years ago, 2005. It's called Syriana. And I remember when this movie came out, I was like, oh, Syriana, like, is this about Syria or what? Or what, you know, what, what is going on over here? This is a, um, a George Clooney movie and it's got like a really good, like, a, you know, ensemble cast, George Clooney. It's got Matt Damon, Matt Damon's in it, Jeffrey Wright's in it as well. Um, and I can't remember, does he play like a C, like he plays a spy or something in there, right? Yeah, he plays some sort of a, uh... Yeah, I think it's a, C is it a CIA operative or something like that, I think. Okay. Bob Barnes. And he won the award. He won, he won the Oscar for this role. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. I think this, 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 this movie does have a, a hint of, of uh, sort of real life events. Yeah. Because uh, this shit goes on, you know. It's about uh, sort of politics. It's about the oil industry and, uh, you know, in the hands of those uh, who's per who are personally affected by it, you know, and how they manipulate, how they move, the deals that they make, uh, you know, how certain certain situations to do with oil and you know, obviously land and things like that can cause conflict. You know, it's big stuff. You know, people that control demand have the power. So no, so so people that control supply have the power because people that demand it will pay anything for it. You know, so it's really. You know, it's like playing chess on the world, you know. Mm, it's crazy. But yeah, he's, he's a CIA operative. Yeah, definitely CIA, but Barnes. And it's about obviously like what you mentioned about kind of like the America losing the uh, oil, obviously losing control of the oil that is that's in the Persian Gulf. And um, I think he goes in and he like, you know, does some deals and it's about them trying to control that. And check this out. I was just reading about this. The company, so one of the companies is called Connex Oil, and um, it says over here, uh, if Connex were a country, it would rank as the world's 23rd largest economy. Are you serious? That is how much money, influence, political power, political pull, whatever you want to call it, that is what these companies were doing. And this movie, Syriana, basically get to the heart of that whole corrupt you know, power tends to corrupt type of a thing. And, uh, oh my gosh, man. Yeah, man, this is, this is crazy. You know, the CIA are very shady, you know, because <laughs> they deal in like missiles and arms and all that kind of stuff. But also maybe the, the sort of eighties drugs, like, you yeah. know, with like, I don't know, like, uh, uh in Colombia and all those like Mexico they and stuff all behind we, that. Yeah. They, they get involved, you know, they're the ones that, yeah, they're shady. They trained, they're... <laughs> remember they trained the, um, uh, in the 70s against the Soviets, the... Um, yeah, the, the, well, the missile crisis, the Cuban missile crisis or yeah. something, or the Cold War. Yeah, but not only that, they trained the um, uh, Bin Laden's thing. What was his... Uh, the Taliban. Oh, they oh supplied, the Taliban. Oh, yes, yeah, of yeah. course. Yes, so they yes, supplied yes, the weapons yes, 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 and yes. the training so that then they can overthrow the Soviet Union because America was you know, in this whole Cold War type of thing. Not only that, they had their fingers in stuff going on in Chile during the 70s, mm. dictatorship and stuff like that. Man, we could, there's a whole new podcast, mm. man, that we, we could, could talk about. All, <laughs> Loads all, of the, all allegedly. So if you're listening, CIA, <laughs> allegedly. Yeah? Allegedly, come on. Come and get us. Hell. Come and get us. Exactly. Don't mm. like send born after us or something. Um, all right. Okay. So next movie, 13 Days. So this movie is from 20 years ago, the year 2000. And again, a um, based on kind of like a real, this is based on like the, the what Deval just mentioned, the, the Cuba missile crisis and mm -hmm. the whole kind of backstory behind, you know, what was going on. It's based on, I think it's based on the memoirs or it's based on a novel written by someone who was involved in that whole period. So in the 1960s and you, you, some of you might not remember this or might not even know that America and Russia were very, very close to going to war based on this whole idea of, of nuclear weapons. And, you know, Cuba was the kind of launch pad for all this sort of stuff going on. Yeah. You know what it was, it was at the time they say that it was touch and go literally yeah. like, you know, these, these uh, nuclear weapons uh, were meant to be placed uh, in uh, Cuba. They had the power to wipe out the eastern 
sort of Eastern American sort of board, I guess, seaboard. Yeah. And yeah, just imagine that. Like if that shit, if that shit happened, it would change the world, you know, because when nuclear, when nuclear weapons or atom bombs hit or whatever, I swear, don't they sort of make that, that land uninhabitable or something? Yeah. Of course, like it's people crazy. like in Nagasaki and uh, Hiroshima, yeah. even now today, there's still kind of like issues oh and stuff going gosh. on over there, man. So imagine a Cuban, like, you know, a missile crisis where that all happens. Mm. And remember in X-Men First Class, they kind of touch upon that whole thing. Yes, 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 they did. In a nice and, way, actually. Yeah, and at Umbrella Academy as well. If you've, if any fans have been watching mm. that, mm. They, they kind of mention that as well. But yeah, again, this this movie go, gets to the heart of that. It stars Kevin Costner, stars uh, I won't know who else is in this. I think he was the other. He was the main big star. I think on this one. Yeah, Kevin Costner, Bruce Greenwood, who you've seen in quite a few TV shows. But yeah, I think Kevin Costner was the main guy in those days, and in this film, he was as well. So yeah, mm. and uh, ironically, it was a box office bomb. Oh, was it? So oh. um, even though yeah. critically it did really well, it was an actual box office bomb. So um, that's, that's, that's surprising because the director was the same person that did Species, Cocktail, uh, you know, those sorts of films. Yeah. So I'm surprised that it didn't really do so well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Roger Donaldson. Yeah. Story sounds great. So um, yeah. So listen, uh, if you love your Plitko movies, definitely put that one up there and put Siriana on there as well because they've got these different takes on different kind of like events that have been going on around the world. Next movie, 25 years ago, making it a bit lighter now, The American President. Uh, I think this is kind of like a rom-com, I want to say, with um, uh, Michael Douglas, is it, Devaldo? That's correct. Him him getting a bit raunchy. Yeah. With, uh, <laughs> you, you know, he, with, with Annette Benning. he's always, you know, Annette, back in those days, Michael Douglas was, he was a ladies' man. Uh, yeah, Martin he was Sheen's a sexaholic. To Michael J. Fox. Yeah. He's in this movie as well. Uh, Richard Dreyfus is in this. They're a bit of an all-star cast, but yeah, you're right. It's a bit of a sort of, it's a political film, but it talks about uh, sort of Michael Douglas trying to be president uh, and the environment that he's in. He falls in love with the wrong person and stuff. And it's all about, you know, well, it's all above board, but it's just politics and perceptions and mm. it just doesn't work so well. So, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, it's a political film, but it's also a love film as well, in a way. So, mm-hmm. yeah, 91 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That one, go check it out and let us know what you think. Yeah. Now, lastly, from thirty years ago, Truman. Okay, so Devar, tell us about this one. Yeah, Truman. I don't mean the Truman Show as well. <laughs> so Truman, uh, Truman was the uh, the president. Was it? Yeah, it was, was yeah, uh, Harry S. Truman. Harry S. Truman. That's the one. Yeah. So. Uh, 33rd president. So this one stars Gary Sinise as the president. Gary Sinise, we know from, he's been in like, uh, was it Mars? He's been in a, a sci-fi film. He was also in CC, uh, CSI, I think New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's uh, been he's around. Been, been around the block, yeah. So basically, uh, this one is about Harry S. Truman, how, how he becomes 33rd president following the the uh, the death of Franklin D. Roosevelt. Right. These are big names in American uh, sort of political presidencies and stuff like that, you know. So, yeah, it just shows how he really sort of came to to be, uh, how he uh, led the country, uh, his strengths and his weaknesses, and a bit of a a character study, really. Uh, And they say that uh, he was considered unqualified. Mm. I think at the time he wasn't considered the best person for the job, uh, and uh, maybe they didn't really, you know, they didn't really like him that much. Uh, and maybe, the, what do they call it? The the polls, you know? Maybe yeah. the polls weren't all in his favour in the right states and stuff, but they considered him to be unqualified. But I guess, you know, sometimes, like, like I said, it's not always the best person that gets the job. Sometimes it's the right person in the right place. And most importantly, he was the one who made the decision to use the atomic bomb. Mm-hmm. I was just, yeah, I, know, I, just, I just saw that, yeah. That's, uh, well, he's definitely not the right person then. He could have pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> so imagine, he's imagine, not the right person. Devado mm. making that decision. Joker. It's like, okay, we're going to drop the A-bomb and that's it. That's like just total devastation, destruction mm. and like, you mm. know, oh shit, man. Joker. 
Joker. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, those are your anniversary corner films. So again, like I said, do let us know what the theme is for those films and uh, we'll send you the Rakuten movie code. Thank exactly. All right. So yeah, so those were your anniversary corner movies, folks. Now let's get into our film review. So the first movie that we want to speak about is a Netflix exclusive. This has just just basically arrived when divided a couple, like, couple of days ago or something or yesterday or something. Yeah, it literally just came out recently. Yeah. And uh, it's a British film. It's a British horror film. But I know you're probably thinking, okay, but Halloween's over, blah, 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 blah. But we kind of watched it over the Halloween period. And it's just kind of like... A, you know, one of those with these movies where we said like, okay, we're going to watch it and we're going to kind of speak about it. And yeah, so it's called His House, set in, in the UK about, I think this South Sudanese uh, asylum seekers, yeah. they've traveled from their hometown, like war-torn. They've, you know, gone through hardship. They've kind of made this kind of arduous journey and they arrive in the UK and, you know, they've been told, listen, look, you know, you're basically given a chance you got to try and make your life mm. and you got to be, and I'm, I'm quoting, you got to be kind of like one of the good ones. And yeah. that line in the movie, <laughs> Devaldo, oh my gosh. Because it's kind of almost like as if, like, you know, when people, when, when, when outsiders see kind of like obviously refugees and asylum seekers coming into the country, maybe people are going through like, you know, these questions of, are they going to be good? Are they going to be bad? And blah, 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 blah. Mm. And they kind of given this label. So they end up in England and they, you know, obviously given a house and they just basically said, look, here you go, get on with your life. You've got to try and fit in. Mm-hmm. And Devaldo, and then, you know, what f- fill in some of the gaps for me. Yeah. So it's they, they, they come over, like you say, uh, and they uh, get asylum, they get a house, uh, but during the journey of coming over, they actually lost their daughter. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you find out, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but you find out a bit more about their daughter and the relationship that they have with their daughter is not straightforward. And that that relationship is the reason, I think, as to why when they get to their house, they start to experience some supernatural madness. <laughs> and some, <laughs> some of the supernatural madness that happens is just different. Yeah. It's not your your haunting of blind manner. <laughs> no, no, it's definitely your haunting not. of blind manner. You know, your your kind of stereotypical ghost walking around and stuff like that. <laughs> this is bad. This ghost is a Sudan ghost. <laughs> it's a different kind of ghost, mate, yeah. Doing different stuff, different movements. Yes. It is mad. When I saw the movements and the the, the sounds and the look of this ghost, I was like, nah. I will run out in the street <laughs> half naked. I'm getting out. You know what? Uh, I w- two good actors, yeah, two go on, good, good go great on. British actors, Sope Derisu De- and Wumi Masaku, who yes. currently, Wumi Masaku is currently in uh, Lovecraft, Lovecraft country. Right, and Sope okay. And uh, Derisu was in Gangs of London recently. So yeah. both really good stars. So yeah, I, I liked it. It's, it's a different kind of movie, but it's, <laughs> it's decent. It's, I tell you what, you know what? The beginning of the movie... You like obviously you feel for these characters and you're like you, you obviously you're you're sucked into their world because obviously you know they've made this kind of long journey and then yeah. what kind of what kind of uh, I got from the movie was they've gone through all those horrors and then they come to England thinking that mm, okay yeah mm, this is going to be kind of like a new life for us a new beginning for us and then they there's a, there's another different type of a horror that they're going to have mm. to deal with and there's one scene right that um mm. it's, 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 there's a bit in the bit a bit in the beginning of the movie where he's on the floor and there's just kind of like a little crack that you see mm. in the wall and there's something in the back man I'm not joking mm. that freaked me out <laughs> I'd rather go back to the country and deal with that, you know, because <laughs> I can't deal with this. Nah. <laughs> and the scary nah. thing is, right, it's Send like wherever back. you go, this thing will follow you. Mm, exactly. That's scary, man. But uh, yeah, decent film on Netflix now. So go catch film. that one, guys. I'd probably give that one a 6.5 straight yeah. seven but yeah decent give it a go decent. his house De- definitely give it a go and uh, the other movie that uh, we're going to speak about is again another netflix exclusive this has actually been out for a, probably about a week or so and uh, ties in with some of the some of the movies that we were speaking about on anniversary corner so this is called the trial of the chicago seven and 
I went into this movie knowing a little bit about it and the less you know about this movie I think that's going you know what it's going to be a better experience for you. Uh, it's quite a, a a long movie it's over 2 hours long it's directed by Aaron Sorkin written by Aaron Sorkin he's the person behind uh, the social network and if you've kind of yeah. know his work the you West know Wing, that a few, a few good men Wing, a few also, good men he also wrote uh, guess what he also wrote <laughs> the American president which we just spoke about well, okay, well, there you go. So he is a, uh, you know, um, you know, writer, director who has got obviously got these political leanings. And this movie is a political movie. And it's based on a real life event that happened in the 60s, 1968. It was a democratic uh, uh, convention protest. And it's all about the Vietnam War. You know, they want the protesters, the demonstrators, they want the, you know, the US government to bring back the troops and to stop the killing from going on. And on one side of the argument, then you had obviously the establishment, you got the government, they don't obviously believe in all this sort of stuff. And the movie takes the audience, takes the viewer on this journey of who the main characters were during this period. So you've got, you know, actor, uh, what's his name? Um, um, Borat. Joseph Gordon Levitt. Oh, Borat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen as well. Sasha, yeah, yeah, Sasha Baron Cohen's on it. Jo- Joseph Gordon Levitt's in it. You've got uh, the guy who played um, Stephen Redmayne. Hawking. Mm-hmm. Eddie Redmayne. All these great actors. Mark Rylance, who's another great British actor in there. Mm. He plays the lawyer and he's defending these, you know, seven. Mm. You've got Yaha uh, Abdul Mateen. He plays uh, Bobby S- Bobby Seal in there. He plays, who's the head of the, you know, the Black Panthers, who's absolutely brilliant in this. I'm telling you, go and watch this movie. It's great. It's a great political movie. If you want to find out, If you want to see the similarities with kind of the whole kind of, um, you know, the legal system with what was going on back then in the 60s to what's going on right now, you are going to see so many similarities. And do you remember, um, remember when we watched Black Klansman and where Spike Lee, he kind of infused in the movie uh, kind of like, you know, the realism with shots of you know, real life events into, you know, his movie. Do you remember that, Devaldo? Yeah, yeah, that was really deep, actually. Yeah, I remember deep. that one. Same thing with this movie, where some some parts of the movie are told in flashback and they intersperse the flashbacks with actual real life footage of the demonstration. Oh. And you, oh, you get okay. the coppers, man, they like tear gas, battering people on the head, blood, noses broken, like, you know, basically people being shot at, people like, you know, like real life confrontations, which we're seeing in America right now. So definitely, if you've got the, if you've got the time, watch it. It's a two hour movie, but the way that the movie is directed and the way that it's written, you you won't feel like as if this is two hours. It's, the movie's going to zip by. And Sasha Baron Cohen is really good. My only criticism is... What is up with his accent? What's going on? <laughs> what is it? Is it American or English? It's, mate, it's, it's supposed to be American, right? And his, you can hear his British accent coming through a mile it off. Is. Oh it's my so God. It's so off-putting. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, he's really good. And uh, Mark Rylance, he plays the lawyer for the for the Chicago 7. Uh, he's really good as well. So there's all these different characters and there's too many moving parts for me to actually kind of like say, this is what happens, that what happens. But basically, it was a real-life event. It brings together all these different characters in a trial. And it's just like shocking, like what went on in this trial, man. Like racism discrimination, like all this sort of stuff going on in there, man. It's, it's, it's riveting, actually. It's actually really, really good. It's called The Trial of the Chicago 7. Go watch it. Nice one. Thanks for that. I think I will, actually. Yeah. I think good. I will. All right. Okay. I don't think we've got any more time left to speak about movies. We wish that we had, but you'll just have to turn in to us next week on the show. Devaldo, it's been great talking to you, catching up with you. Uh, we've got some m- more great movies that we want to speak about uh, next week. So uh, yeah, keep it locked with the Flicksters. Defo. Peace out, guys. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Just pop in the Flicksters podcast.